I want to thank you guys for, for coming out here on a beautiful Friday morning. Has anyone here attended the SEF um, speakers, the trade show? I know you have been at John. Uh, what's your impression of the, the show so far? It's been very good, very educational. Yeah. Good speakers. Yeah. I'll tell you what's really encouraging. There's a lot of students that are very interested in sustainable energy and renewables and, and energy efficiency. And uh, I think it bodes well for the future of our industry. Uh, in fact, many of the attendees here are, are college students from all over the country. I've talked to quite a few of them from Florida, from the Carolinas. Uh, we have professors here from Turkey, Istanbul. Uh, I mean, people from all over the world are, are attending these type of, of conventions. And uh, it's very exciting. So anyway, my name is Ken Yeager. I'm VP of National Affairs with AFC First, and what I'd like to do today is talk a little bit about AFC First and what we do in some of our programs, uh, but my primary focus is going to talk about financing and monthly payment options, and why it's so critical for contractors to use them as part of their sales system. I've been with AFC First now for uh, almost 10 years. Prior to that, I was a consultant in the HVAC business. Uh, I recommended back office software systems to help manage inventory, accounts receivable, um, automatic deliveries, accounting, all that kind of stuff. And prior to that, I actually worked for and helped manage my family's HVAC business. So since I was a young lad, I've been in this, this energy world. Um, I think I can go all the way back till I was eight years old when I picked up my first shovel and started loading up coal trucks. Uh, so one way or another, I've worn many of the hats that you guys probably wear now. Um, with AFC First, my main goal is for contractors to close more deals. That's my sole purpose in life, to help you guys get more business using our programs. So uh, before I, I get started, who in the room here is a contractor? Is everyone in here contractors? Okay, so everybody. Uh, everybody in here is approved with AFC First right now. Is there anybody that is not? Okay, we got a few. Uh, before we leave today, I want to make sure that I give you the information you need to become an approved contractor with us. Um, all those that are approved with AFC First, how many of you use our financing programs? Very good. If you keep your hands up, how many of you offer it on every single proposal to every single customer every single time? Okay, there's less hands up. How many of you, with your hands still up, lead with financing every time you make a sales call? Very good. You're my expert in the room. Um, what I'd like to have you do or hopefully understand by the end of this session, is how important it is for you to not only offer financing, but to do it every single time, to every single customer, on every single job, and to offer it up front so that you don't have to make them ask for it. Because if you get to that point, it's too late. Okay, you're already going to be on the defense. So that's my goal today. A little bit of information about AFC First. We've been around for about 70 years, almost 70 years. The last 15 years are the years of note that we're going to concentrate on because in the last 15 years, we have done nothing but energy efficient lending. We're not your typical lender. Most lenders will do auto loans, maybe mortgages, refinancing. Um, maybe they'll have savings accounts, checking accounts, you can walk in and make deposits. AFC First is focused exclusively on energy efficient loans. That's all we do, and we're very good at it. We are very unique. We're so unique, in fact, uh, we have former contractors on the staff, we have BPI certified uh, employees. Next week, in fact, we have I think seven or eight more employees, myself included, that are going to get BPI certified. We're going to go through the process and do all the testing, the field testing. 
I don't think there are any other lenders in the country that can boast that kind of claim. So this is our world. This is our market. It's all we do. And uh, like I said, we're very good at it. Now, we have over 5,000 contractors nationwide from Maine to Florida and Hawaii to Alaska and everywhere in between that use our programs. And the programs they use are listed up here on the board. We have our nationwide energy loan program, good in all 50 states. It's good as a catch-all for anything that's energy related. This program can finance uh, everything from roofs and siding to sewer lines to uh, breaker box upgrades to solar, wind, geothermal, and everything in between. So it's a very good nationwide program. Then we also have some state-specific programs. Uh, Maine Pace, Kentucky Home Performance. We have some on-bill programs in Illinois and Hawaii. Uh, Energized Delaware, we have programs in Cincinnati and Richmond. We have programs with uh, manufacturers and sponsors and utilities all across the country. The program that started it all for us, though, is the Pennsylvania Keystone Health Program. That's the program that made AFC First the national leader in energy efficient finance. It is our main staple program. And we're going to talk briefly about that program. Um, these are some of the awards we've won over the years. We're one of the select few power saver lenders in the country. Um, so we have been recognized as, as being very good in our, our field. Uh, but the Pennsylvania Health Keystone Health Program started, innocently enough, right here in our own backyard, as a very small incentive program for a small utility in central PA, and it got the attention of the state government, which can be a good or a bad thing, I guess. Um, in this case, it was very good, because we partnered and gained support with PA Treasury and the DEP and the Pennsylvania Housing and Finance Agency. And over the course of time, we got the support of all the utilities, uh, press releases from the governor's mansion, and uh, fantastic rollout to this program. It's now in its 10th year, 9th or 10th year, I think it started in 2004, 2005. Um, and still is the nation's most successful financing program for energy efficient improvements. So we're going to talk just a little bit about that. Uh, the program is, are any of you contractors in the Philadelphia area? Yeah. Okay. And you're probably aware of a program called Energy Works, which, uh, see so your head shaking, is basically our Keystone Health program with additional uh, capital used to make the rates even more aggressive and more attractive. So it's been a fantastic program. We've over 1,600 contractors in the state using the program. Um, and after today, I hope we have at least four more to add to that total and uh, hopefully help us start closing some more deals. Now, the one thing that's unique about our programs is they are true fixed rate programs. Well, what does that mean? To understand true fixed rate, you have to understand the other type of financing options out there. We're all familiar with credit cards, we're all familiar with 0% programs. These programs sound very, very attractive. And the reason they sound attractive is because they are. People love the sound of 0%. And they love using credit cards to get their airline miles, and Disney points, and iTunes cards, and all that kind of stuff. The reason they're so attractive is because the people offering them are getting huge rates when people default on those, those programs or don't pay them off in turn. I have an example here. We're all familiar with Sears. All American companies, at least up until recently, they were a model in efficiency and expertise, and you could trust these guys. And every Sunday in the paper, they would have a full page ad in the coupon section where they would talk about no payments for a certain amount of time. Sears was one of the best companies in the world to offer financing. Now, if you look at their ad, it looks attractive until you get to the very bottom here. And at the very bottom, the print gets kind of small. At the very bottom, it gets even smaller. I can't even read it. 
I mean, I, I need a magnifying glass to read it. But what it says is that if you don't pay off this, this card within the six or 12 months, whatever it is, the rate's going to go to 30% if you're a platinum Sears member, 35 if you're a gold member, and 38 if you're silver. That's not a bargain. You know how many people default on these type of products, these type of promotional teaser rate programs? It's over 80%. Sears is making 30, 38% interest on over 80% of everything they sold. Now, their financial problems aside recently, I don't know what happened to them. They probably changed the way they do business. Maybe their products aren't as good. But that is a teaser program. True fixed rate program, which is all AFC First has to offer, is just like it sounds. If you quote a rate of 7.9%, that's the rate the homeowner's going to have for the duration of their loan. For contractors, if you're quoting a payment of, let's take $61 a month for a $5,000 job, the homeowner is not going to get surprised when they open up their state from us and see that number go up. It's going to be $61 a month for the duration of the loan. That is true fixed rate. Credit card companies will change their rates. If you read all the disclaimers you get periodically from them and, and uh, look through all that stuff, you will find that they have a right to change the rate at all. Same thing with 0% programs. So for our customers that want to get a trip to Disney World, they want to use their Disney car because they get 2% back in all purchases. In fact, right now, this is Samuel Jackson promoting some credit card. 2% on everything. You know, it's, it's kind of a, a funny commercial. But let's take a $10,000 installation. What's 2%? $200? Tell you what, you got to spend a heck of a lot of money on that credit card to pay for a trip to Disney. Okay, there's a reason these things look attractive and sound attractive to homeowners, but when you dig down into the numbers, they really aren't. If you take that same $10,000 job, instead of using a credit card to use our AMC First Keystone Help program, you can see the payment is less than half of what the credit card minimum payment will be. Credit cards, regardless of the rate, require a minimum monthly payment. I have a credit card that's 3.9% minimum monthly payment. We're showing a uh, comparison here of 2.5%. So we've been conservative for the credit card here, uh, but you can still see the numbers are pretty drastically different. After two months, that homeowner will have saved more money using our program than they would with Sandy L. Jackson's 2% back plan using a credit card. In just two months, they'll have, have saved more money towards that trip to Disney. And what's even better, and this is uh, maybe double dipping, I don't know, but guess what? AFC First accepts credit card payments for our loans. So here you can save them a heck of a lot of money on their monthly payment, and they can pay us by credit card and get the best of both worlds. Okay, so Disney is looking better and better all the time. Right? That is true fixed rate finance. And that's one of the things that separates our programs from the rest. Uh, these next slides, I'm sorry. Um, we're going to go through these because you can't read them. Instead, I have some handouts here, which you can look at when you have some time. They give you information about the Pennsylvania Keystone Health Programs. You can pass these down. Let me get a few more. And we'll talk about Keystone Health more specifically afterwards when uh, we have some more time. But I didn't want you to strain your eyes looking at all those details. They outline some work. Yeah. Thanks. 
So those, yes. And you want. You need one too? Sorry about that. Thanks. Those pages kind of outline some of the programs we have, the rates, the terms, what's eligible, and uh, uh, some of the definitions that we have for the Keystone Health Program. And I would be glad to talk to anybody afterwards about specifics for it. But I think to summarize the Keystone Health Program and all of our programs, if you're doing anything energy related, we have a program for you. Now in Pennsylvania, it just so happens that the more energy efficient the work you do, the better the rate the homeowner gets. So there's a built-in incentive for people to make their whole house more energy efficient than for those people just looking to replace a, a system. Okay. What I really want to talk about today is financing monthly payment options, and why they're so important to the success of your business. So first of all, let's talk about financing in general. And I want to concentrate on the second bullet point, which says 70% of all home improvements are financed today up to $15,000. Everyone here knows what your average cost is for your basic system replacement or the work that you do. Maybe it's below 15, maybe it's over 15. But when you get over $15,000, you see the people that use financing jumps to 90%. Those are a lot of opportunities that you're missing if you're not offering some kind of financing program. Now, I have some contractors that uh, tell me that all their customers pay cash. Is there anyone here like that who only have cash customers? All right, good. Because my response to that contractor is, you know what, I believe you, you're absolutely right. The customers who want to finance are going to your competition. And you're talking about 70% of consumer opportunities go to your competition. 90% over 15,000. If you don't start to offer your products and services the way consumers are buying things today, you're missing a lot of opportunities. And that's what is very important about finance. Now these numbers here, these numbers here are from the Consumer Advocate. They're a year or two old, but they're still relevant. In fact, the numbers today I think are actually a little bit worse. The top number is the amount of cash the average American has available to them. Three to seven thousand dollars. That's it. The eighty-two hundred dollar number is what that same person owes in credit card current debt. So, if we wanted to get out of debt today, we couldn't. We don't have enough money. This is a typical scenario. Now let me ask uh, anybody, what's an average price for, well, let's just say, a three, three and a half ton air conditioning system? Just average ballpark. Okay. Ten grand? Okay. Thank you. That's a nice even number. I like that. Ten grand. But I got to tell you, when I, was, when I was selling, we were selling furnaces for 1700 bucks and boilers for 25 and, um, I guess I kind of dated myself. But yeah, uh, prices have gone up quite a bit. Ten grand. You just asked for more money than they have. Okay? You go to the home, you do your your estimate, you check out the house, you sit down at the dining room table, and you tell them it's ten grand. What happens? What kind of reaction do you get? I love that look because that's exactly what you get. <laughs> that's the look this gentleman just gave us. Now, that's an exaggerated look for for this presentation. It's on purpose. I have seen that look though. The more common response is that you get silence from 
your customer. And the silence is not because they're listening to you. It's not because they're excited about you having Nate certified technicians or you drug test everybody or um, your company's been around for 100 years and you provide outstanding service. The reason they're silent is because they are now trying to figure out a way to pay for what you just said it's going to cost them for something that they need. Because a majority of your business is probably what we call reactive customers. They've called you because something broke. They have no clue what these systems cost. In fact, on average, Americans only buy an HVAC system or anything energy related once or twice in their lifetime. I'm over 50 years old. I've owned six houses. I come from an energy background. I used to run my family's HVAC business. You know how many systems I've purchased in my lifetime? Zero. I don't know why, and I didn't get them for free, so don't, don't think I'm um, bailing out on you there. But I have never purchased a system. Now, I'm in my current house now 10 years. I've got a 10-year-old heat pump that's 13 sear, works great. I'm going to upgrade probably sometime soon unless I move. But the average American doesn't make this purchase that often, so they have no idea what to expect. That's why you get, you know, the look of shock, or you get the quiet customer. They're thinking about, how am I going to pay for this? Do I need to sell stocks? Do I need to take money from my kid's college fund? Do I need to call my Aunt Jerry? Do I need to call my mom and dad? You know, what do I have to do? That's what they're thinking. So they stop listening to your sales pitch. They don't care about the features and benefits of dealing with your company. The reason that they may not buy from you, and the reason the average closing percentage in our industry is about 30, 33%, is because you have not made what you're selling affordable to that customer. It's not your reputation, it's not the equipment, in many cases, not the price. But the thing is, you have not made that price affordable to the customer. We have contractors that have gone from 28, 29, 30% close rates to over 50 overnight when they change the way they sell. Let me ask you guys, what's the definition of insanity? Seeing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. Give that man a prize. Doing the same thing over and over and over again, yet expecting different results. doesn't work. you got to change the way you do things. For those of you that aren't offering financing or monthly payments, as soon as you start to, you're going to see a dramatic difference. I had some sales guys that were afraid to talk numbers. If you're a sales guy, that's a handicap. And you probably shouldn't be in sales. Okay? When you're talking a $10,000 system, some, some sales guys want to just push the proposal over the table to the homeowner and point at the price because they can't ask for 10 grand. It's a lot easier to ask for $161. Okay, so it's going to help your sales guys get comfortable talking about money, which hopefully they are already. So there's a lot of benefits to, to talking about finance. Now we talked about the reactive customer, and up until, I'm going to say very recently, five, six years ago, most of the business at AFC First was the reactive type business, where something broke, they called you guys, you went in, you offered financing, uh, you gave them a loan, you fixed it, you paid you guys, so on and so forth. Over the last couple of years, there's been a growing trend now, granted, it's still not a huge part of the market, but it is growing. It's called the proactive customer. These people we call the thinkers. These are people that attend conferences like the SEF conference today. They belong to organizations that promote energy efficiency. They love renewable, sustainable energy. They want to make their home as energy efficient as possible. They want to conserve water. They want to save the planet. 
They want to do all these really good things. Maybe it's because their utility bills are going up. Maybe it's because they have other motivations. But this market is growing. These are people that now will not just call you up when something breaks. These are people that will go on the internet and research things. These are people that will call in and audit. Is anyone in here an auditor? We blow our door tests. Yes? Okay. These people will now call you up and ask you to come in and say, where should I spend money? Used to be, um, a couple would, would say, you know what, honey, I, I think we need to put 12 more inches of insulation in the attic. So you call up the insulation guy, he comes in, lays down some backs, and, and he's done. You know what, they're still uncomfortable, they're still cold, and they're still paying high bills. Well, why is that? Because the problem wasn't solved. These thinkers call in the auditor. The auditor comes in and he says, you know what? you got plenty of insulation in the attic, but these recessed cans, they're chimneys. All your heat's going right up through these cans. Or maybe, you know what, these two walls here, you're missing insulation in the top four feet of the wall because it's all sagged down over the years. These auditors are going to pinpoint where the problems are so the thinker can make better decisions. And the thinker usually spends more money. It's not usually a time-sensitive type job for you guys, so you, they have time to really think about what you're doing. These people also want the best products you've got in many cases. They also need finance. Okay? These are the consumers that are spending more than $15,000. And if you remember the slide before, 90% of those people use some kind of financing for those purchases. So you have a market now, and that market, by the way, I think is around 10% of our volume, where years ago it used to be around 3 or 4%. So it is growing. And awareness through conferences like this and, and just everything in general you see in the news is, is making that market grow even faster. Now, what are the benefits to the homeowner for using these type programs? First of all, it's not going to take that three to seven thousand dollars. That's taking them a lifetime to save. Okay, they're going to be able to keep that little nest egg. It's not going to tie up a credit card because, let's face it, people use credit cards for gas and groceries and everyday purchases. They don't want to put a ten thousand dollar purchase on it. They're probably going to have to file it away. Return on investment. The really good sales guy is going to pull out a legal pad and he's going to start to show some numbers to that homeowner. Okay? Where maybe the savings that they're going to realize from a new system, from sealing the home, insulating, weatherizing, is going to more than offset the cost of doing it. Very realistic. Where you can have a savings projected at $80 a month, but the whole thing may only cost them $60 through a financing program for us. You're going to show how their fuel savings and utilities can help pay for the installation. And this last item here is, I don't want to trivialize it, but do we remember why we got in this business? Make money? I don't know. But isn't it because people would call you up for one reason, and it was because they were uncomfortable? Maybe they were too hot, maybe they were too cold, maybe there was draft in the house somewhere. Maybe there's mold, maybe there's sweat coming out of the ceiling, ductwork. Whatever it is, their pain is that they're uncomfortable. And too often in our industry, and I know I was guilty of it, you go to a home and you take a look at what's broken. Oh, you need a new condenser. Capacitor's shut. Compressor's blown. Um, you don't get to the root of the problem. Tell me a little bit about what's going on here. Are you comfortable in the house? We as salespeople are so busy talking that we forget to listen. We can't wait to show up and throw up. We want to tell you everything we know. But we don't ask questions. 
And here the homeowner is making this first purchase of their lifetime, probably the third or fourth biggest purchase they'll ever make. And they put their complete trust in you, yet you don't even diagnose the problem. If you do, you're going to find that maybe you're going to get something more than what they called you for. Maybe their child's bedroom has lost the insulation in the wall, and every winter they're sick for three or four months because they can't just get warm enough. Maybe. Maybe the grandparents never show up anymore to play with the kids because the floor that they play on is ice cold because the floor has no insulation. You've got to find these things out because comfort cannot be understated or overstated. Which way would be the problem you say? Jim, no. Comfort cannot be overstated. All right. Now, what's the benefits for you guys? Before you move on, one of the other things that you were also missing is promoting the word, improving the indoor air quality. Absolutely. So I think that goes hand in hand with the comfort. Yeah. Yeah, and indoor air quality is a huge, huge concern today. Uh, I'm just talk, not talking radon and, and things like that. You're talking about all kinds of pollutants and, and humidity and all that kind of stuff. Yes, and that has to be addressed in all that we're doing going back to the energy audit because we're going to change that whole, uh, the whole thermal dynamics of that building. So right. It's all, all sorts of ramifications. Yeah, we have to educate the customer. Yeah. And that, for me, has uh, been a great selling point. Uh, These are my customers. Are really, yeah. Uh, flash on. I'll tell you, this industry has changed a lot. When I was working for my family business, our slogan was energy experts since 1939. And when I was in the attics laying flex stuff, outside the thermal envelope on top of the insulated, insulated barrier. I cringe to think of ourselves as energy experts. Because we all know now, hey, you gotta get that inside the thermal envelope, otherwise you're trying to heat 160 degree air, or cool at 160 degree air. Indoor air quality has made leaps and bounds over the past five, 10 years as something that if you're not involved in, maybe you want to partner with somebody that is, or even get into it yourself. Uh, where I'm from, I'm from down in uh, Ocean City, Maryland. We don't have basements, but what we have are crawl spaces. And guess what? The biggest issue we have is mold. And if that crawl space isn't sealed or, or done properly, your home is ruined. And you could have health benefits that affect yourself, your family, uh, uh, for a lifetime. So it's very critical, and it's something I think maybe 10 years ago or longer wasn't even addressed um, you know, as a major concern by, by this industry. So, got a lot of opportunities. Benefits to the contract. If you have to read past the first bullet point, then that's a shame, because that should be all you guys need to use financing. You're gonna close more business. Okay? You're in business to close business. But what's really great is you have these other benefits. Now, when I was selling my $1,800 furnace, my $2,500 boiler, I would have option A, maybe a multiple zone. Option B, an extended warranty. Option C, uh, maybe some kind of humidifier, air cleaner. And what I didn't know was that the homeowner couldn't afford my $1,800 base system. Sure as heck, we're going to buy any options. I never sold any accessories. I probably wasn't a very good salesman. Um, that's annoying. I think I'm, I'm getting better as I get older. Um, but I didn't sell many of those things. If you think about using monthly payment options, and you take that $5,000 system for $61 a month, which now the homeowner can afford, what's the humidifier cost you? Ball, ballpark, 700 bucks? Okay. Or we can install the humidifier for another $6 more a month. Hey, I can afford that. 
What about a 10 year warranty? Maybe another seven, eight hundred bucks. Okay, so you've gone from 61 to now 68 to maybe 75 dollars a month, and you've got indoor air quality stuff, you've got extended warranty, you've got maybe instead of your good or better system, you now have the best system just for a few dollars more a month. So you're going to sell more accessories, you're going to increase your average sale, you're going to sell more of your better equipment, which hopefully you have better margins on. It's all good stuff. And you've made it affordable for your customer. It's made you more competitive. I know you guys in this room aren't the cheapest guy in your territory. Okay, there's discount companies everywhere. You got do it yourselfers going to Lowe's and, and Home Depot and trying to do it yourself, and then they call you up when it's not working right, right? Um, this is a great, great program for you guys. Now, are there any people that handle the accounting or the finances in your office? Okay? Okay. I know we wear multiple hats, don't we? Um, they're going to love this because you get paid the day after the job is done. No chasing receivables. We've had some companies, very large companies, start to use our program because all their cash was tied up in receivables because they chose to finance in-house. Now, why would a company want to do that? They're not a bank. They just tied up all their cash. They can no longer buy inventory. They have trouble making payroll every week. If you're a, a salesman working on commission, how frustrating is it for that sales guy to sell a job, to see it installed, but not get paid because the homeowner is taking 60, 90, 120, 150 days to pay off the balance. I'm upset. I did my job and I haven't been paid for it yet. So for a sales guy, financing is great. They're going to get paid quickly. So a lot of good reasons for the contractor to use these programs. Can we afford it? So number one, uh, reason that you don't get a job today. And these programs uh, will help you do that. Now, the price point that was mentioned earlier, $10,000, um, we like to call in the twilight zone because most of our loans, I think our average loan is about $6,000, $7,000, somewhere in that area. Um, when you get over $1,000, most people don't want to use a credit card. It's just too big a purchase to put on. And until you get over twenty, twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars, you really don't want to go to a bank and go through the whole process of getting a home equity loan. Um, and that's if you have equity today. I think the latest stat is forty percent of all homes are underwater. It's a pretty high number. Um, so you need to have something in that in-between area, and that's where our programs really fill a need. So anyway, we call that, that price point the twilight zone. And our programs will, will fill that for you. We talked about a shock to the system. We talked about the size of the purchase being one of the largest they'll ever make. We talked about the 70 and 90 percent uh, people that use financing for improvements. Let's talk about this. This is a $5,000 job. And I got to tell you this, I got to tell you I have a contractor, a friend of mine, who, when you look at these numbers, you can kind of understand why he tells me this, and I'm not sure I believe him. He's very reputable, very successful, he knows what he's doing, but I, I still don't believe him. He tells me that if someone wants to write a check or pay cash, he talks them out of it. I'm sorry, I don't accept cash. Is there anyone here like that? No? <laughs> Why am I not surprised? Okay. This contractor is going to sell a $7,000 system to the same customer here because he's going to push a monthly payment program. And he's going to sell, instead of the cheapest thing the homeowner can afford, he's going to sell an energy efficient system with some accessories and some warranties. And 
the price is going to rise. His average sale is going to go up just because he's now doing it in a monthly payment option. So he tries to talk them out of paying cash. Hey, you know what, Jim? Keep your cash. You know what? Go to Disney World. Okay? We can do this for $61 a month, and the first payment is for 30 days after the job's done. Okay. I, I still don't know if I would do that. Ask me again. But you can see the comparison here from cash to a credit card. And here I'm using my credit card rate of almost 4%. I still have to make a monthly minimum payment. 0% programs, yes, you still have to make a monthly minimum payment. Okay. Our program blows them away. It's not even close. And that's at one of our uh, 7.9 rates. Okay, It's not even at the lowest rate we have. We have some programs that go down to 0.99%. Wow. That's pretty cool. You know, there's always free cheese in the mousetrap. You gotta look at some of this stuff. You really gotta look at the numbers. And you gotta give your customers the option to make a choice. Because if you don't, one of your competition probably will. And I don't know what it's like in today's environment. I know when I was selling, we were competing against maybe two or three other companies. Today I've heard it's double. You're competing against maybe five or six or more. Homeowners seem to have all the time in the world to sit at home and have people come parading through their house to give them estimates. I think it ends up confusing them the one that gets us healthy enough. Um, but people shop. And if you can give them an affordable payment, uh, you're going to be ahead of the game. The one thing that uh, I get asked about sometimes, and I quite frankly don't understand why I get asked this. But someone will ask me, what's the monthly payment amount for a five-year term? And I'll ask them, why do you want to know that? Because that's how I want to sell my system. Why do you want to sell it in a five-year term? Well, because that's what I want to do. Yeah, but why? They don't tell me that. Because they don't have a reason why. Why would you sell something at a price higher than what you can offer? Right? When you go out on a date for the first time, do you wear your your worst outfit or your semi-best outfit? No, you wear your best. Why not make whatever you're selling as attractive as possible? Offer the longest term, the lowest monthly payment you can. All of AFC First programs are no prepayment penalty programs. There's no additional fees or costs. There's no cost to you guys, by the way. You get 100% of the amount financed when the job's done. But why would you offer anything less than the maximum term? Okay, you're trying to get the deal, not lose it. So always offer the longest term, the 10-year term uh, that you can. We have a secure program which actually goes 20 years. The 20 or 15, Jared, do you know? It's on your uh, hand there's, there's a There's one through 15 and one through 20. Yeah, so I mean, we have some even longer terms, um, which make the payments even more attractive. So it's all good stuff. It's, uh, I don't know what percent of our loans all start out at 10 years. I think it's the majority of them. The average loan actually only runs about five to six years before us. So most homeowners do pay them off a lot quicker than the 10 years. But this is why it works. It's a lot easier to sell $61 a month than it is $5,000. And that's what we're talking about. We're talking about making what you sell affordable. Now let's take off your salesman hats and let's put on your buying hats. You are now consumers. You're at home on a Sunday, you're listening to the TV, the radio, you're reading the magazine, the newspaper, and you need furniture, or you need an appliance, and you see all these great ads, and they're selling um, furniture for $199 a month, they're selling appliances for $62 a month, they're selling, um, if you're up late at night, you watch infomercials, 
you have the shark versus the dice. You know, hey, three easy payments of fifty-two dollars, whatever it is. Everything today in this entire economy is sold and bought on monthly payment. Think about it. How do you guys buy it? Monthly payments, probably. Yet, in our industry, how do we sell things? Ten grand. There's a disconnect here. For some reason, our industry just really hasn't embraced finance. And most contractors that do are going to be so far ahead of the curve from the competition, you're bound to get more business. Everything today. I have, uh, here's another, another human. I had LASIK eye surgery done, and it's probably coming up on 10 years now. And I can see, I can see the fly on the wall in the back of the room. I can't read anything close up anymore, but um, I think it was about 4,500 bucks to have my eyes done 10 years ago. Now you can get it done for $30 per eye per month. And that's pretty affordable. What do you think? Sounds a lot better than 4500 bucks. Here's another example. Nutrisystem, the greatest weight loss program in the world. And they can sell it to you for less than $7 a day. I paid almost $5 this morning for a coffee. It's a pretty darn good coffee. But I doubt I can make it through the rest of the day on two bucks. Now I'm trying to lose weight. This sounds great to me. I'll buy it. What would that cost if they sold it for a year worth of their product? Okay, seven times thirty is two ten times twelve, twenty one hundred. We're looking at about twenty five hundred bucks, give or take. I don't know how good my math. Take weekends off. <laughs> I like that plan. Um, but how successful would they be at 2500 bucks? Probably not very. But seven bucks a day, we can all afford that. This is the uh, probably the product that started all cars, notorious for monthly payments. In fact, I don't even know if you can find out what the full price of a car is these days because it's all in monthly payments. Unless you actually go and see the sticker price on the window of the car. They tell you what's due at signing, uh, but nowhere in most of these ads, whether it's on TV or, or print, will it tell you the full price of the car. I love this. The Fitness club, the health club industry, they are fantastic in talking about different options. You have in the top left here a per week option, then you have a daily option, then you have a per class option, then you have semi-monthly and monthly. I think they cover just about everything. They get it. Now, I found these ads very easily. And I continued to go on the internet and I started to search for HVAC specials, companies advertising their products. And I searched high and low. I was Indiana Jones looking for the lost art. I looked everywhere. And you know what I found? Down one ad, and I think from the area code, it's an Illinois uh, contractor. He's advertising uh, refinancing for 48 months, new systems as low as $49 per month. Now, it's not a great ad, but what do you compare it to? No one else is doing it. That makes it a fantastic ad. Why don't we advertise like this? Why don't we sell like this? Why? I don't know. Maybe I, I remember for many, many years 
our salespeople were more order takers. They'd sit in the office, the phone would ring, the receptionist would pick it up. Hey, John, someone wants to buy something. And you take the order, you schedule it, you do it, and you're done. Now we have to actually sell. Okay? And it's a lot harder than it is to pick up, to sell than it is to pick up on the table. And I think once we get used to talking in terms that people buy things in monthly terms, <laughs> once we get used to that, we're going to start to see more ads like this. We do have some contractors that have been very, very good at talking and promoting monthly payments. And they use their websites and they do have some ads, um, I think in newspapers that I've seen. But it needs to be a part of your sales system. It needs to be an everyday type thing. We need to change the way we think. We need to become less insane. Okay, we can't keep doing things the same way over and over again. Now this is um, uh, an interesting scenario. Let me ask you guys, which home would you offer financing to? Awesome. Both homes. Absolutely. When I was in my bad salesman days, I would never go to that house on the left and offer financing. I would think they had a swimming pool in the back just filled with money. And I halfway expected to walk out with the cash. And I lost every single one of those jobs. People on the right, hey, maybe they pull out crisp hundred dollar bills from the mattress and they pay you cash. You just never know. So you don't discriminate. You offer it to everybody. Every single time, on every single proposal, up front, all the time. It's kind of a reoccurring theme today. Now let me ask you this. Today's Friday. It's um, almost 10 o'clock. For those of you that are estimators, salesmen, so you've been in maybe a, a dozen and a half homes this week. You've been in crawl spaces. You've been in attics. Um, you probably lost eight pounds, uh, sweating it off up there. You're all itchy from all the insulation going through your clothes. And you can't wait until five o'clock and it's happy hour. And the weekend is upon you. Now, Mondays and Tuesdays, you've been re-energized. You feel good. You're excited. You're passionate. You're ready to go. Oh, man, this has been a long week. Put in 65 hours so far. I'm just exhausted. Can you hear? How do you think that homeowner feels making their once in a lifetime purchase? Their third or fourth largest purchase they're ever going to make. And your salesman walks in with that kind of attitude. Not very good. And let's not fool ourselves. People buy from people. They don't like your sales guy. They're never going to buy it. I don't care how good your company is. When they have an appointment with your sales guy, and let's say it's for 10 o'clock, well, at 9.50, they're at that window or door waiting for you. And they want to see if you run over the garbage can. They want to see if you drive on the lawn. They want to see if it's leaking oil in the driveway. Do you trounce over their nicely mowed lawn? Are they tucking in their shirt? Do they drop their drawers on the street to tuck in their shirt? I mean, when they come in, are they clean shaved? Do they have cheese curl crumbs in their beard? Do they smell like smoke? Is their hat on backwards? Do they have facial piercings? Do they kick the dog? Do they leave smudge marks on the door frame? Do they drag soot on the carpet? Do they notice the big swordfish hanging above your mantle that you're so proud of that your wife absolutely despises? What do they do when they walk in the house? It all matters. Okay? I like to make every sales call that your guys go on, I like to associate it as a Broadway performance, opening night, because all the critics are watching. You have one chance to make this impression. One chance only. And if you don't cut the mustard, it's on to the next guy. They have to like you. 
Something else that's important, aside from your sales guy's appearance and behaviors, is what you leave behind. Now, I don't know, there's probably some guys in here that like to close on the first call. Maybe, um, maybe it's a little aggressive for some homeowners. I think some home, homeowners like to talk to their spouse, maybe over dinner. They like to compare what you've given them from what you've given them from what you've given them from what you've given them. And after the day is over, they don't remember the darn thing about what you said or you said or you said or you said. All they remember is what you've left behind. Now, I don't know what your proposals look like. If it's done on a cocktail napkin, or if it's done in a 40-page, leather-bound, picturesque type of brochure, whatever works for you and your company, you want to make sure it answers all the questions that a homeowner may have. Because most will have to refer back to that to compare what everybody has said. Okay? Now, this cocktail napkin is, is actually, I, I got corrected by a contractor a couple of weeks ago who said a sales trainer actually recommended they do something like this. Personally, if I'm a homeowner, I'm not going to sign something on a cocktail napkin. <laughs> but, I guess if you're dealing with repeat customers, someone that you know and have a relationship with, it kind of brings the good old boy type atmosphere back to the table where, yeah, I know Ken. You know, we go way back. In fact, here's the proposal to get me. Isn't this cool? You know, it's, I don't know, maybe it's that kind of thing. I don't know. Cool seems to be in in a lot of areas these days. Um, I don't buy it. I do do it. But anyway, that's how some people try to make proposals. But make sure what you leave behind answers questions. Uh, just a couple of, of things to, to wrap everything up here, and, and uh, we'll be done by 10 o'clock. Um, some sales tips. We talked about insanity. Um, if you're doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. It's probably not going to happen. If you see other people doing the same thing you are, maybe it's time to do something else. You need to separate yourself from the others. Stand out. Be different. You know, when you walk in that house, comment on the pictures on the mantle. Compliment the homeowner on something. Okay, show interest. Don't just go in here. I know we're all under pressure to do our four calls a day or, or whatever it is. You know, when we were doing cleanings, we tried to cram four cleanings into an eight hour day. How can you possibly do a good job doing a cleaning in two hours uh, traveling across town? I mean, you know, it was the way we did things. We were insane. We never changed. And maybe that's still the way you can do things today. I don't know. But, um, Show some passion. I like this eliminate think it overs. I know that I had drawers of maybes at my desk. Okay, well, they get an answer from this one, this one, this one, this one. I'll call them again next week, and I'll call them the following week, and I'll, I'll call them for weeks after weeks after weeks. And what a waste of time. Wouldn't it be nicer if they just said no? Now, absolutely, yeses are better. But no's are pretty darn good too. Because it makes you forget about it. You want to find out why. Learn your lesson, but move on. Get an answer. Yes, we can schedule this for you next week. Well, I'm still thinking about it. Well, what can I do to help answer any concerns you might have? Okay. Get to an answer right away. It's going to make you more productive. People buy from people. You've got to ask questions. Don't just show up and talk. I think something else that is, is interesting, I was at an ACI conference last week, and I attended a seminar where they were talking about the language of our industry. Now, who here can tell me what an evaporator coil is? Okay, it's about everybody. How many homeowners do you think really care? 
How many homeowners even know what a condenser is from an air meter? A coils? Two coils in the shape of an A? I mean, really. Our language in this industry, we throw around all day long, carelessly. What's a homeowner really care about? Being warm when it's cold? Being cool when it's warm? Okay. Be careful with the language you use. Be careful with the jargon. Put things in terms that they understand. I know it's hard, but even in your proposals, your leave behinds, you want to try to make sure that you answer questions in people terms, not industry terms. Because our industry, and we've all been in it, I don't know for how many long, how many years you guys have been in it, but it takes a long time to learn. Okay, when you hire a new technician, not out of low tech, but maybe someone who was an insurance agent years before, do you think you can really train them in our industry in, in a month? Six months, a year? Think about all the training you guys have had. Now, you've got two hours in front of a homeowner. You're going to dump all this jargon and knowledge on them? Whew. It's got a headache. It's a lot of stuff. Ken, I would argue, though, that that would be a customer being aware that if you have that knowledge base, even if it's not overwhelming them, well, help with the sale. In my case, it has. Yeah. So there's there's a, a fine balance that you need to show your expertise, but you also need to show it and communicate it in a way they understand. And no one likes the smarty pants. You know, I know all this stuff, and I'm going to throw these terms that you don't understand at you. But there's a way you can do it and communicate it so that they understand it. And that's my point, is, is the fact that most people aren't familiar with our everyday language. So you need to be a thesaurus of type of sorts and, and kind of translate all that stuff for you. Um, lastly, selling should be fun. No homeowner wants to feel the pressure of a sales guy to close a deal. I know um, that there are a lot of, of very aggressive one-close type, um, one-call close contractors out there. Um, but you want to come across feeling that, you know what, I'd love for you to buy from me. I think we have the best product, we have the best company. Here's a great dating program. Uh, you know, can you give me a yes or no? But it should be fun. Okay? You want to let your stress uh, be felt by your customer. All your customers pay cash. you got to have alternatives. Give your customers as many different options as you accept. And leave it behind on your proposal. Because when they're at dinner that night, they're going to say, hey, we can do it this way, this way, or this way with Jim's company. Okay? And insanity. So that's um, my presentation on monthly payments and financing. Um, I'm sure you've heard a lot of this stuff before. You've maybe even heard it from me before. Um, but if you're anything like most people, you need to hear things about a dozen times before it really sinks in. So it's all good stuff. If you leave here today wanting to become an AFC first approved contractor, and you go back and the easiest thing you can do is change your proposal template, which is probably on a Word doc form, and add right next to the full price a line that says, or a monthly payment of, if you make that one change today, you will see tremendous results tomorrow. I can pretty much guarantee that, because your customer is going to ask your sales guys out there.